Hi, I'm Carrie Sherburn, Senior Editor What They Think, and I'm pleased to be here with a couple of very smart gentlemen. Steve Smiley, who's with Smiley Color and Associates, and Ellie Khoury, who is with Awan Color Expertise, ACE, right? Welcome. And we're going to talk today about standards in the printing industry. So Steve, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about what's new with the International Standards Organization, ISO, in terms of the kinds of standards that you're developing there for the printing industry. Okay. ISO TC-130 is the graphics technology group that writes standards for printers, for supply chain partners, for suppliers. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we have been able to publish ISO 15339, which is a set of print definitions that define printing that can be done anywhere in the world. Okay. And what that really means is instead of having a swap data set or a Fogger data set or a Japan color data set, we have an international standard that can be used for flexo, offset, gravure, digital, and it aligns the brand owner to the printers. So we can use color management and pass data anywhere in the world with my expectations communicated. Mm -hmm. And does this apply to process color and spot color or? Tell me Good about question. That. <laughs> um, the 15339 data sets are for CMYK printing. Okay. We have also published ISO 17972 Part 4, okay. color exchange format, okay. spot color characterization, which allows us to communicate to ink manufacturers, everyone in the supply chain, spot color data also. And then what about now we're hearing a lot more about extended color gamut? CMYK, OVG, orange, violet, green, or orange, violet, blue, depending on who you're talking to. What about that? We're talking about how to make a data set for that today. Okay. Today it can be handled and is in most companies mm -hmm. um, using the 15339 data sets mm -hmm. and then the CXF data for the orange, green, and violet. Okay. And so, you know, when you think about the printer, our audience out here that needs to implement this stuff and comply with the standards, obviously we need some kind of software to help them do that. So, Ellie, can you talk to us a little bit about what's required there? Yes, actually, the color definition that 15339 and 17972 for process and spot color mm -hmm. allows print buyers and brand owners today to define and communicate their expectation from the printer, which is something new that was not easily possible uh, before. Mm -hmm. So having your uh, CMYK color spaces, having your spot, your brand color defined with ISO specification mm -hmm. allows actually any um, uh, software, any operator in the reproduction workflow to um, recognize the color and to be able to manage it and to bring it to the printed product. And this is actually what the new Alwan uh, color suite mm -hmm. that we call the McDowell suite uh, allows uh, printers to do. And so as we have an increasingly global supply chain, this mm -hmm. becomes more and more important, right? Because you have different paper stocks, you have different printing technologies, you have Absolutely. different printers around Absolutely. the world. Absolutely. And this is really what's important about 15339 and what it is important for printers mm -hmm. to embrace this standard. Mm -hmm. This is because this is the first printing standard that recognizes color management mm -hmm. as a technology which is necessary to match colors across printing processes and that gives our ways to match these colors on different substrates mm -hmm. as well since people don't print on ISO substrates, right? Right, and this is what I was going to ask you, Steve, specifically because obviously the color will look different based on the, the type of substrate and the color of the substrate they're mm -hmm. using. So do these standards encompass that aspect? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ISO 15339 has a tool to adjust the substrate so you still get a common appearance. Okay. And then the real power in it to me is that we can print now. All the old printing standards were made for offset mm -hmm. or gravure or digital. This is made for any printing process. So my products, Flexo, Offset, Gravure, and Digital on the shelf on different materials, plastic, paper, mm -hmm. metal, will all have the same appearance. Now, obviously software is important, but maybe you could, Steve, just talk a little bit about the hardware that's involved because a lot of printers still just use densitometers and uh, I'm assuming that you might need something like a spectrophotometer for this. Absolutely. So tell me and a little about that. So in 2009, ISO developed uh, 13655. <laughs> Uh, which, Bless your heart. <laughs> which is specifying how spectrophotometers shall be made and okay. manufactured. 
Today, all the manufacturers are very similar. Mm -hmm. Even the densitometers that you buy today are really spectrophotometers giving you density values. Oh, really? It okay. is important that people upgrade to these mm -hmm. new standards. Mm -hmm because they include fluorescence and brighteners that we get from the sunlight and our lighting. Right. And, mm -hmm. and the, the optical brighteners that are in the, the materials. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Mm -hmm. And inks. They're in the inks too, right? So, so if, what would your advice be to a printer that's you know, maybe been just judging color by eye, there's still a lot of that, and needs to get into the modern condition? What, what do they need to do? I teach classes and brand owners and people First thing is you need a view booth that's accurate. With lighting booth? You need an instrument lighting. that's mm -hmm. accurate. Mm -hmm. You need to do colorblind testing so mm -hmm. you understand the limitations of your eye. Mm -hmm. And then you need to have a workflow that takes your customer's expectations and delivers that to your printing machine. And so, um, Ellie, you know, in North America anyway, uh, the Adobe suite is, is pretty much the, the tool of choice for designers and perhaps in other parts of the world. So obviously there needs to be some kind of connection. How does the software work for the mm -hmm. designers how do the, how do, in terms of specifying these colors? Actually, yeah, today most files, printed files, are PDF files. Okay. And PDF allows today to have color definition for process colors and spot colors. Okay. However, these definitions today are a little bit loose can be misinterpreted mm -hmm. by workflows by printer and 15339 as well as CXF allows a better more solid objective numerical definition of the CMYK values of the spot colors and allows the printer with a PDF enabled workflow mm -hmm. with color management process control to reproduce these colors and to match customer expectation on any printing substrate and on any printing process and then of course Steve those designers need to work with calibrated monitors, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> because if, if they don't have their monitor calibrated, what they see yeah. on the screen, they're going to be disappointed uh, with the outcome. We're really pushing everything we've done in pre-press uh -huh. upstream to designers. Yes. Don't set bad expectations up front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Show us something that was made mm -hmm. using the correct job definition, color definition, spot mm -hmm. color. They can do it as easy as anybody else can in this Adobe PDF workflow. Mm -hmm. So all of the years we've been talking about color management, I know you and I used to go to the IPA uh, tech, tech seminar in uh, Chicago. Now we're finally getting to a place where we can really print to the numbers, huh? Yes, ma'am. Terrific. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.